That is not pleasant. Well, good morning everyone to this lovely morning. Um, it is March the 18th today um, and it's been a little while since we have looked at the cotton, so I'm here now to do a quick look. I've no idea what I'm talking about, but if anyone is that is watching knows about cotton, you should be able to see different things and do whatever. So it's just more of a more of an update from me. We were going to organise to get, well, Brad was going to organise getting the agronomist out, um, or next time the agronomist came out to get him to talk about it. So there's actually someone that knows what they're talking about, talking about the cotton. But um, anyway, that hasn't worked out. So. Um, yeah, it has been a little while before we've had a close-up look at the cotton. Um, and yeah, here it is. It's looking quite good, considering um, we have just been struggling for moisture for the last couple of weeks. Um, you might remember I'd mentioned a while ago that it had actually had some water logging issues, which is which is true. Um, but, but yeah, the tap has just been turned off. We haven't had much rain for a good few weeks now, so... Um, yeah, it's going to be fine. It's going to survive, but it's not going to yield um, as good as it could have um, So we'll just walk through here. So We've had um, Yeah, we actually did have about three or four mil of rain last night um, Which yeah is not realistically going to make much difference. It'll all just evaporate off as soon as the Sun comes out um, But better than nothing gives the gets a bit of water on the leaves of the plants and freshens them up a bit so we've got the flowers are happening or have been happening they're pretty much um, yeah falling off now I believe I'm just trying to find if there's any fresher ones oh yeah um, so yeah then they turn into these which this is where the cotton comes from Let's see if I can open it so pull that open and that's the beginnings of the cotton um, you can see it's uh, just really compacted there and that'll pop out of that and turn into the cotton that you would recognize the fluffy stuff so at the minute it just looks like a wet or feels like a wet clump of spiders web that's all there's a seed developing in there so that's all that's all that so that is what happens we'll probably in April sometime I'm guessing we'll probably put a defoliar spray over it which means it kills it all off um, because it makes it really hard to pick um, or get the you just get a lot of trash in the cotton um, because these bits here will still hang on like they'll be all dried off and that but they can still hang on so yeah you basically got to kill the whole plant because this these like cotton plants just keep growing and growing and growing anyway hopefully that can be an update and yeah hopefully at some point we might be able to get someone that knows what they're talking about to uh yeah to sh yeah show you there's a nice big one there so yeah it's been i said it to walk like when we i was first talking about this a few months ago but i was only a little little boy when we last grew cotton so um times have changed a bit now um it's yeah quite a lot easier now than it was back then it's uh what is the date today actually i'm not organized i started the video before i checked it is the 21st of march um last couple of days have just been a bit of maintenance we did a service on the 280 that sort of thing i don't think i filmed that um but yeah there's just been a couple other bits and pieces that sort of thing going we had a couple of wet days so um brad and phil are both back on the dozers now I'm currently here at the development block. I just had a quick look at this ute. This is Robbo's old ute, which is now um, Josiah's work ute. So um, we sort of resurrected it enough, I think, that we'll get a bit more life out of it. But it just wasn't up to doing what, um, what Robbo needed it to do. So um, Robbo's just taken off in the grader, and I am about to head down to the south lease block and fix the air conditioning on the grasshopper. Um, so I've got the kit that I'd set in the, uh, a couple of videos ago now um, when the air conditioner wasn't working and I was spraying there. So yeah, I've got that kit. I'm going to go and check it out, get it going and working hopefully. So next time we need to spray down there, it's all ready to go. I'm going to head down and hopefully I don't run into any more problems with this aircon system.
Well guys, we're here with the house. I'm um, just gonna get started into figuring out what exactly. I've got a couple of options to do. Um, just ignore the stick and the zip tie holding the door shut. That's all I had at the time when I was I did that. Probably should think of a more permanent solution. Anyway, maybe another time. But, um, so these are the aircon hoses here. So one of them is the culprit. I'll just double, triple check which one that is um, before I cut it. Um, but I can either, um, in the kit here, so I've revamped, revamped the aircon box here. I was sick of everything just being a bit of a mess. So I've got a bigger box and the hose repair kit actually comes with the pack out system. So I got another one to fit all my bits and bobs in, another pack out. But yeah, this is the kit, the repair kit that I was I'd mentioned previously that we were we'd ordered. That is not pleasant. So after dropping that, I've reorganized it. So we've got, um, yeah, this is the kit and um, yeah, so we've got the fittings I need. I'm guessing it'll be this one. I can either just cut the hose and I've got um, new hose there and I'll make up a new half a hose and just join it to the original, if that makes sense. So that's one option or I, um, which I don't actually think this kit comes with it, but you can get a, the other end of these fittings, which you could make it so you could pull it apart. But I'd actually, yeah, now that I think of it, I don't think this kit comes with that. So I think I'm just going to have to have to do that. But um, yeah, it's all the, just the basics here. You can expand on it and buy other bits and pieces. You've even got um, fittings here where you could cut a lot, a lot of the time. You've got a fitting, like a special fitting, uh, whether it goes in the receiver dryer or whatever, um, that you can't buy. So they're from factory. I don't think, I think these are all just normal hoses. But for instance, if that was a special fitting, you can just cut this off there and then you can um, weld it in with a bit of braze welding or whatever it may be. Um, and you can weld that up and then put these clips on there. So that's them there. So yeah, anyway, I'm just gonna double check, make sure that I've got the right hose, make sure all of that's good to go. And then I'll, um, yeah, then I'll do that. And I'll make sure the hose is nowhere near the water pump pulley, which is what it rubbed on and caused the leak in the first place. So I've also got a receiver dry there to replace. Um, so there's a, there's a little bit to do, but I'm just gonna spend a bit of time to make sure it's gonna work. And then I'll, um, yeah, then I'll update you. Now it's actually a reduced hose, so that means it's a smaller wall, but I'm hoping I can use the, um, this, this is 10, I'm hoping I can use the six, number six hose crimps on that. So, oh, actually that might be number eight. Anyway, it's been a little while since I've done this sort of thing, so I'll figure it out as I go. Well, first tick up. Um, I didn't realize the Burger Flex system uses uh, reduced uh, barrier hose, which I probably should have looked at that a bit closer, but I ended up just getting the standard one because I thought, well, that's the most common. But I really, really should have the reduced barrier hose. So I'm a little bit, just trying to figure out exactly what I'm doing. I've just dummied this one up. So that's with the hose that was blown. So I'm fine joining it onto the original hose that was reduced. But this hose, that's the standard stuff. So that's how much fatter it is. I can clamp that down potentially with the number 12 clips. I'm sure that's not what you meant to do but I might be able to just jig that and um, yeah, and that might work. Um, it's just whether or not the clamps are gonna have enough force to squish that down, which I think it will. It's, um, yeah, it's only rubber. The only difference between this and the reduced barrier stuff is just 
an extra bit of rubber on the outside really it's not it's not um, any more reinforced or anything um, or not that much anyway so I think I'm gonna just gonna have to try that if it doesn't work I mean at the end of the day it's it's only what $50 worth of fittings and that so I can um, come to come down and do it again I mean really don't want to do that but I'm here now so I'll uh, I'll just dummy up this um, hose or remake this this is where the hole is where was that oh yeah, up there there's a few surprised it lasted this long yeah that's the one that gave us trouble at the end so I'm, I'm really wanting to put this thicker stuff there anyway just because it is get running in the front of the motor you know just for whatever reason I'm gonna tie it right up but it should um might give you a bit of more warning being a bit thicker so I'll do that let's just yeah see whether that works see whether I can get a good crimp on the end of the new hose and make this section up before I feed it through and um and yeah just see what happens right after a slight bit of modifying I am um, I'm ready to give it a try I think up here we go oh, I hope it works Well, I think that's it. It's pretty good actually. Apparently they're designed so you can actually twist these. It doesn't seem right that you should be able to do that, but apparently it also means that if you don't get the hose quite lined up right, you can adjust it. So anyway, right, I'll cut that to length about a little bit longer than the other one, and then I'll block the end off so I don't get dirt in it. I'll feed it through, and then I'll fiddle around, try and get the other end connected up but um, I think it's gonna work so I'm happy this should be as easy as this let's check that's lining up oh. Right, well, that's good, I think. Um, now, I've just got to do the receiver dryer. 
double check everything might tighten a couple belts while I have it on the vac well I had my head buried all the way up in there replacing the receiver dryer and all of that so I just got to zip tie up a few wires and things up there in the hoses and make sure they're not going to rub but I'm going to get this started on the vac um, this is a little portable vac pump so leave it on here for 45 minutes or so um, we've got the big mama battery on it and um, yeah so I let that run while I'm tightening belts and going over the machine and checking a few things out and um, then hopefully it's just a matter of gassing it and we'll be we'll be all good and we'll have a cold aircon again I will actually put a bit extra oil in the system too. I'll suck it using the vac pump. I'll um, put a bit in the uh, high side line and then I'll suck it through by using the taps and um, yeah, suck it into the compressor that way. Right, well I've had it just sitting. Uh, I turned the vac pump on uh, about 10 minutes ago and it hasn't moved at all. So that means we're good. We've got no um, leak it seems so that's excellent um so yeah i'm just about to gas it i don't think i've got enough of the proper gas so i'm going to use this um unregulated stuff so yeah other because i don't really want to mix them and if i run out of that yeah anyway it's just one of those things so um i yeah just gonna see how much it takes i'll probably put oh maybe 400 grams in to start with see what happens might even fire it up after it's got about that in it Should be able to, should be able to start up, I think. Oh. Eventually fired up. It's getting cold. See what the pressures are doing. Looking pretty good. Oh man, that's nice. That is beautiful. Well, that'll be that'll be all I'm doing for today. I think by the time I get home, it's going to be knock-off time. Well, by the time I pack up that mess, but I'm glad. Um, I've at least had to try this Burger Flex stuff. I, yeah, again, I've never tried it before. Didn't realise about the reduced barrier hose versus standard hose, but now that I do, um, yeah, that's good. I've learned something. So, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll have to get some other hose. Well, guys, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it today. We will catch you in the next one.